What up, beautiful souls? I hope you're doing well. I hope this message finds you in a state of peace. Welcome to another episode of <clears throat> With Extra Feels. This is, uh, again, this new sort of playlist that I'm creating um, where we talk about mental health and emotions and feelings and um, being a human and navigating those experiences and I just wanted to drop in and sort of um, reiterate and elaborate on why I'm doing this. The actual main reason is mental health has in the last two and a half years for me personally shot to the top of my priority list where literally nothing is more important than my mental health maybe except for surviving like staying alive is more important than mental health and that's about it which is interesting because a lot of the times like the patterns and the um, belief systems that we've picked up that are creating these Um, patterns of behavior or patterns of reacting and responding or anxiety or depression or other mental health issues Um, the patterns and the belief systems have come from a place of survival we had to believe this was the truth for example you are only worthy of love or you are only lovable if you do well at school uh, have a good job or uh, um, this is these are like very common belief systems that we um, pick up in childhood where um, we literally believe that we're gonna die if we don't fit in with society with society and get a good job and make our parents proud or happy or whatever that means Um, these are belief systems that we create out of survival because above all else we will survive even if it means that we're having a shit time and we're suffering from anxiety or depression we will survive that's number one so we're alive we've done that we've got this far we're alive what's next okay am i having a good time mental health that was not a priority for me at all um two and a half years ago And I used to see online people talking about mental health week and um, talking about anxiety and opening up and talking about depression and things like that. And I was used to sit there thinking, that's so, that's unfortunate that you suffer from mental health issues. That's obviously not for me. That's not, I don't suffer from mental health issues. And what I didn't realize is that I fucking did and I was suffering from anxiety every day and I just thought that was how the world works and that's like how that was totally normal. I'm supposed to be like on edge a little bit and um, I was also suffering from depression and I still suffer from depression every now and then. What I wanna really drive home the point of like it is not wrong to feel anxiety or depression or have other mental health issues. You are not wrong. There's nothing wrong with you for feeling, having these experiences. It's totally normal. But what's also becoming totally normal is us talking about it so that we can choose and have choice, sovereignty, bring back that freedom of choice to know that we can choose to take steps to spend less time anxious less time depressed. We're not gonna like clear those things out and say that we're never gonna feel them again um, because those emotional experiences are valuable to us. That, that feeling of anxiety, that fear where your body is flushed with um, adrenaline, that fight or flight fear, that's useful. We need that to survive. That's part of our survival mechanism. But we don't need we don't need to run from tigers anymore or lions. Like we don't need to be feeling that quite so often. Now, when we when we're feeling um, when that becomes less common, um, if that becomes less common, like for me, I've put in a lot of work to um, over the last two and a half years, and I've had a lot of help from people to get my mental health in check. What that means is I've actually cultivated presence. So 
Anxiety is a lot about think, worrying about things that might happen in the future. So you're imagining at scenarios. Depression is worrying about stuff that's happened in the past, which you can't do fuck all about. And so understanding this is one thing and then bringing it into practice to cultivate presence of being in the present moment then from presence I can if I'm feeling anxiety I'm like okay I'm feeling anxiety am I check my thoughts mindfulness practice am I thinking about am I worrying about something in the future that is in the future and I actually can't control and there's nothing I can do about it right now okay I don't have to worry about that and then internally I can talk myself out of that feeling of adrenaline and that fear I can't control it there's no point in me being scared about something that I can't control it's com it's literally out of my control it's out of my hands we can start to have that internal conversation with ourselves and start to um, choose or at least have awareness over how we feel through cultivating presence so now I feel like I'm I live my life with presence way more presence I'm here I'm not in my mind if I talk to you even now I'm talking to you through a camera there's literally nothing on my mind I am engaged presently with what I am doing if I have a conversation with someone I can maintain eye contact with them without worrying about what they're thinking about me or things that are also out of my control the way people react and respond to me I can maintain presence and from there if I then feel anxiety or like a, a bit of a weird gut feeling that's my intuition telling me something and then I start to cultivate a, a conversation like a, a language through my body of my intuition and I start to know things and feel things and have insights into things energetically which is like having a fucking superpower it's uh, aside from the benefits of not feeling anxious all the time cultivating presence to um to uh, build on your intuition is literally like having a superpower it's like amazing super fun um and you get to the whole process of this is like getting to know yourself okay why if i'm feeling anxious do i want to feel anxious yes or no if the answer is no if i don't want to feel anxious all the time or i feel like it's kind of out of my control and like things externally that are happening to me which are out of our control are causing me to feel anxiety firstly which of those things in my life can i actually just cut out of my life like if there are toxic relationships or friendships in your life where actually i just feel anxious all the time i'm around this person try spending less time around that person because your mental health is above everything it's above the importance of all your friendships it's above the importance of your family even i know it's difficult if you still live at home it's above everything mental health above everything and if people around you can't understand that when you communicate it because you have to communicate it to be understood you have to say look i feel anxious i'm actually going to leave the party or i'm not even going to come to the party because i'm having a bit of an, an anxious day and i'm just going to go home and like take care of myself if that person that you're communicating your needs to can't hear those needs and then actually support you in what you need that's not a, f a good friend that's not a good relationship and so if that happens repeatedly over time you can well what will happen actually the less you go to these social gatherings that make you feel anxious usually those sorts of people they don't even bother checking up on you are you okay are you okay those are the good friends that are like are you okay good friends check up on each other maybe they're not checking up on you if if a if a friend's not checking up on you maybe it's also because you need to check up on them are you okay you've got to take care of each other especially in these times we're moving through really really difficult times at the moment and mental health issues are through the roof like suicide rates are through the roof and of course like suicide is the absolute worst case outcome for a mental health issue someone who believes that the world would be a better place without them 
that's such a distortion. We need you. We need you here. That suicide rates are going through the roof. So we have to take care of each other. And the best way we can do that is to take care of ourselves first. You can only love someone as much as you love yourself. You can only take care as, of, you can only take care of someone as much as you take care of yourself. And this is something that I've really had to learn because I've always wanted to help people and um, support people and love people. And I've realized, I, I came to the realization that fuck, I actually have to wind this all in and start taking care of myself a lot more. And then from there, I'm gonna fill my cup up and then I can start loving other people from there. So we've gone down a few little, um, little conversations in this, but the key is mental health above everything. And coming back to presence, when our mental health is good and in check and we're not anxiously worried about the future and things that we can't control, and we're not like um, feeling depressed about things that have happened to us in the past that we can't change, lack of acceptance, it takes us out of the present moment. It puts us in our head. So you're either like depressed and you're in your head about, or just numbed out. I used to numb myself completely and I would just dissociate, detach myself from reality. Um, <clears throat> and I was really, really good at that. I just kind of move through the world, not really in my body, just totally not present. And then of course, anybody that's, that's experienced anxiety will know that if you're worried about the future and you're building a story in your head about an outcome or something that's just something that's out of your control, really, if you're worried about it, that fear builds up in you. And then you go into fight or flight mode, which is a survival mechan mechanism, a survival mechanism. It's a survival mechanism, which has gotten this us this far. We've, we need our fight or flight, but we have, we are participating, most of us, in the society now that pumps that adrenal gland, that pumps it. Adrenaline, adrenaline, adrenaline. Be scared of this, be stressful about this, pay your bills, make sure you've got the newest shoes, otherwise everybody's gonna think you're poor. Like, make sure that you're, um, you've got a smile on your face because nobody likes to hang out with someone who's depressed. Make sure, um, so it's like constant. The, the constant external factors that are um, causing us to need to respond in all these ways that are actually unnatural when a lot of people, myself included, just need a fucking break. I just needed a break. I was like, a couple, two and a half years ago, I was like, I'm done. But I got right to the end of my tether for it. I had to bump off a of rock bottom to get there to really sit and be like, wow, I am miserable. I am so unhappy. And I actually re was considering not, I, I talk about suicidal thoughts because I had, there have been moments in my life where I've looked at that as an option. Sometimes you've got to hit that rock bottom and you've got to say, okay, fuck, something needs to change because I'm not having a good time. And over time, I've come to realize the only thing that changes or what has to change on a foundational level is how you perceive what is happening around you, what is happening, what's going on. It's all in the mind. It's all perception. It's all mental. So when we are present, we are, we're here, we're right now, we're in the moment, we're living in the eternal now that is happening, not some make-believe future or some out of control circumstances and not in the past, which is gone, it's done. You can't do anything about that. Accept it and also accept that you can't control most stuff. In fact, anything you think you have control of externally is a fucking illusion. COVID-19 is proof of that. We all thought we, we're all good. And then this virus comes in white and like changes everything. And suddenly we realize, fuck, I've got no control over everything. Like millions and millions, hundreds of millions of people losing their jobs. Um, f f like financial uncertainty, uncertainty over everything. And really there was no certainty in the first place. It was kind of an illusion because 
we can't control stuff like that that's happening externally to us. What can we control? The internal. That's why this is gonna be a game changer. Anybody who's doing their inner work, moving forwards as a species, participating in the collective human race, anybody who has done the inner work is gonna have such a massive advantage, which is why I feel this is so important to talk about because I can't control what's going on around me, but I can control how I respond to it through cultivating presence, through prioritizing my mental health. And from there, not only do I help myself, I can also help people around me. So when these challenges like a pandemic happens, I am in a position or I will be in a position to help myself and help others because I'm here for it. Presence. I fucking love you unconditionally wherever you are on earth right now. I hope this video is helpful. If you find, if you think you know someone who might enjoy this video or not even enjoy it, but might find it helpful, someone who's maybe suffering from um, a bit of anxiety or depression, um, feel free to send this video to them. And do check out also my Patreon community where I do videos like this often longer extended versions where I share more intimately and more vulnerably my own personal experiences around mental health, around spirituality. Also something that I've found has been really, really helpful for me recently um, around subjects like uh, relationships and uh, plant medicine, psychedelic experiences that I've been having and all sorts of other fun stuff. So yeah. I love you um, and have an amazing rest of your day, week, month, year, life.